In this presentation, we're going to review how to calculate aliquot parts both by weighing and by measuring volume. After watching this review video, you should be able to articulate in what situations calculating using the aliquot parts method would be appropriate. Given a sample problem, you'll also be able to correctly outline a strategy for obtaining the desired amount of an active ingredient using aliquot parts, either by weight or volume. First, we need to know what an aliquot is. An aliquot is defined as a fraction, portion, or part that is contained an exact number of times in another. For example, if we put 5 mg of a drug into a total mixture of 25 mg, we have an aliquot of the drug that is one-fifth of the total mixture. This can be seen in this picture as the red block, which is an aliquot that's one-fifth of the total mixture on the right of five blocks. So why would we need to use the aliquot method? Using aliquot parts allows us to make very precise measurements. We might have a very small quantity of a medication that we need, or we might want to make a more precise measurement than what our tools allow us to. When a pharmacist needs a degree of precision in measurement that's beyond the capacity of their balance or whatever instrument is at hand, they might decide to get that desired precision by calculating or measuring in terms of aliquot parts. Unlike many calculations you might be used to, there is not a single correct answer to an aliquot parts method problem. The answer that you get is going to depend on what multiple of the drug you decide to use. There are many different ways to solve the same exact problem using aliquot parts. There are three main steps in the aliquot method by weighing. First, we weigh out more of the drug than we need. Then we dilute it with an inert substance. Finally, we'll weigh out a portion or an aliquot of that mixture that we know contains the amount of drug that we need. In order to set up an aliquot parts by weighing problem, you would need to know the minimum measurable quantity for the balance that you're using. This is the smallest amount of a drug or a substance that your balance can weigh out with the level of accuracy that you want. So a typical balance used in the pharmacy has a sensitivity requirement of six milligrams. If I can accept an error of 5%, which is pretty common, then the smallest quantity that my balance can weigh out with that desired level of accuracy is 120 milligrams. Let's say that I'm making a compound that's requiring only 5 milligrams of drug. On the previous slide, we determined that the minimum amount I can accurately weigh out with 5% error is 120 milligrams. So clearly that's a lot more than 5 milligrams. In order to make this compound, I'm going to have to weigh out at least 120 milligrams and then measure out an aliquot part that's going to contain the 5 milligrams of drug that I actually want. So first I'm going to choose my multiple factor and I'm going to pick 25. So I will weigh out 5 milligrams times 25, which is a total of 125 milligrams of drug. So note that I could have chosen a different multiple as long as it got my amount of drug to be greater than 120 milligrams. I chose 25 um, because that gets me to 125 milligrams, which is very close to the 120 milligrams that I can accurately weigh out because I don't really want to waste any more of the active drug ingredient than I need to. Next, I'm going to add an inert substance or a diluent to my active drug. So remember that 120 milligrams is the smallest amount of drug we can weigh out. So to minimize the waste, um, I'm going to want to make it so that my aliquot is 120 milligrams. So that 120 milligrams is what's going to contain the amount of drug that I wanted. So we'll take the 120 milligrams and multiply it by 25, which is the multiple factor we chose before, to determine that we're going to have 3,000 milligrams of that mixture. So to find out the amount of diluent we need to add, we'll subtract the 125 milligrams of active drug that I weighed out from the total amount of 3,000 milligrams to determine that we'll need 2,875 milligrams of diluent. So now I want to weigh out the aliquot portion of that total dilution that contains the 5 milligrams of drug that I wanted. 
So we have 3,000 milligrams total divided by our multiple factor of 25 is 120 milligrams. So weighing out 120 milligram aliquot of the total mixture will contain the 5 milligrams of active drug that I really want for my compound. Here's a visual representation of the problem we just went over. First, we need 5 milligrams of our drug to make our compound, and we're going to multiply that by 25, which is the factor I chose, to get a total of 125 milligrams, which is what we'll actually weigh out. Next, we decided that we're going to add 2,875 milligrams of diluent in order to get to our goal of 3,000 milligrams of total mixture. We pick this 3,000 milligrams because we know that 1 25th of that is what will actually contain the 5 milligrams of drug we want. It also happens to have 115 milligrams of diluent. So we're going to take that aliquot of 120 milligrams and that's what contains the 5 milligrams of drug that we'll be using. The process of measuring aliquot parts with volume is the same as with weighing, except that there is a least measurable volume for the graduated cylinder you're using instead of a least weighable quantity for a balance. You're also using a liquid solvent in place of a solid inert diluent. Here's an example problem using aliquot parts when measuring a liquid. A formula calls for 4 milliliters of vancomycin solution. You're using a 25 milliliter graduated cylinder with a least measurable volume of 5 milliliters. So clearly you can't just measure out 4 milliliters of solution because that's below what your least measurable volume is. So you decide to prepare an aliquot liquid using water as your solvent that is going to have a total volume of 20 milliliters. In that 20 milliliters, you know that there is going to be 5 milliliters of vancomycin. So how many milliliters of this aliquot liquid will you need to fill the formula? So here we'll set up the ratios. Um, so we'll want 4 milliliters of vancomycin in our unknown amount of aliquot that we're solving for. And we're taking that out of a solution that has 5 milliliters of vancomycin per 20 milliliters. So using this graduated cylinder, when we solve for x by cross multiplying, we'll get that x is a 16 milliliter aliquot. So when we measure out our 16 milliliters of this solution, there will be 4 milliliters of vancomycin in it. And since it's 16 milliliters, it's well above our least measurable volume and we can directly measure that out. Thank you for watching and I hope this helps you to better understand how to use the aliquot parts method.